Hello friends, welcome to e-learning platform, an initiative by Science Park, Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University. Today we will see a chapter or session, Substances in Daily Use, where I am covering a sixth chapter from SSC board and chapter number four from CBSE board. So let's start with the session. Subtopics for today's session are firstly I'll brief you about the need to study different objects and substances around us and to know their properties in detail. Then we'll classify all those substances and then we will zoom in to natural and man-made materials. So first we will list of uh, we'll make a list of natural materials and man-made materials. Let's get to know more about glass industry. On the basis of its history, important inventions and processes, and current industry and its market. Now if I give you list of following uh, substances like sand, soap, window glass, bamboo, cotton, bricks, silk, leafy vegetables, cement, fruits, water, sugar, steel, leather, rubber, so on, etc. All these substances you usually observe around you in your daily chores, in your daily routine. Now, how can you classify these uh, sub substances according to their uses? Think about it. Now some of you will classify them into degradable and non-degradable substances. Or some of you will classify them into naturally occurring that is God-made substances and processed or man-made substances. Some of you may classify them into eatables and non-eatables. Now objects around us are made up of different materials. At times an object is made up of a single material. An object could also be made of many materials. And then again one material could be used for making many different objects. So then what decides which material should be used for making any given object? For that we always observe properties and strength of various materials and substances around us. And then we make different objects from them. For example, furniture can be made from plastic, wood and metal. So, finally, we come to the conclusion that, that by studying the properties of substances, we can select substances suitable for our purposes. Now here I have shown you some pepper mesh products, pots and utensils. But now what if I want to use this paper mesh pots for cooking? I'll have to keep it on flame and then what will happen? It will all burn out. I can't cook anything on pepper mesh utensils. So then what do we use for cooking? Yes, generally in most of, the, uh, most of our houses, we use steel as a common metal for cooking. Or nowadays, there's so much of research is going on here. So we used these anodized utensils for cooking, which are very safe if we put them on flame. So what properties are we looking here? So we want a substance which can conduct heat very fast, easily. Second, should be very stable at uh, high temperatures around 200 to 300 degrees Celsius or so. And third, should be non-reactive towards water and most of the substances. These are three main qualities that we are looking for. So, 
people are again going back to roots and they are cooking in earthen pots but earthen pots are very very healthy they can conduct heat they are very porous very, so all the nutritions can be conserved in earthen pots here i am showing you some impressive and beautiful man made objects in the world those were made many centuries ago so is this possible without studying materials and substances around us no it was not possible so that shows that we are studying substances and objects around us for centuries together so let's start studying natural and man made materials around us and thereby let's study their properties and how they are manufactured natural materials are obviously derived from earth either they are mined or they are farmed natural materials are considered authentic but they age and mature over time and exposure to the atmosphere these natural materials are often considered for more traditional and they are usually timeless beauty natural materials are often considered less harmful to the environment so let's start listing some of the natural materials like timber stone bamboo cane cork silver gold and so many other metals that we use daily leather so how can we classify all these natural materials that we get from nature usually we classify natural materials into biotic substances and abiotic substances now biotic substances are those which are derived from living organisms and abiotic substances are derived from non living organisms biotic biotic substances are again branched into whether they are ori originated from animals or by plants as we talked about natural materials let's see some points about man made materials so man made materials are generally processed and can be made by mixing some raw materials taken from nature as it is and adding into that some synthetic ingredients ingredients which are made from us which can make these raw materials more durable so man made materials historically have been prone to the reputation of being cheaper and lesser quality than mother nature however technology has enabled the manufacture of quality products with extensive design and applications now let's list some man made materials like tiles brick concrete metals glass plastic rubber plaster board plywood or particle board that we use for for, for making furniture paper and paint now out of these let's study glass industry rubber industry and paper industry what do you say okay so let's study glass do you know how glass is uh, produced we use pure sand silica soda ash and limestone and we heat the mixture around 14 to 1700 degrees celsius and that's how we produce glass so let's see history of glass making who invented the processes involved in glass making and let's see some current industrial scenario and production of glass let's see history and some important inventions in glass glass making started about 3500 years ago so at some point long ago humans realized that when lightning struck sand the crystals are formed which are useful so they realized 
that heat if you heat sand some shiny crystals can be produced and then they started experimenting on varieties of sand because every sand cannot produce glass you need to have more than 50 to 60% of silica in that sand so you need a particular type of sand to make glasses after so many years romans realized that glass objects can be made by blowing hot to molten glass through a hollow tube and that's how glass blowing started long with the help of so many years together of research mankind have understood that main ingredient in glass is highest pure silica sand now i have shown you a picture of a uh, purest form of silica sand which is used for production of glass which is also known as culet sand they are recycled they use generally recycled glass as much as as they can instead of using culet sand and then they add soda ash that is sodium bicarbonate i have shown you chemical formula for soda ash or sodium bicarbonate here in the bracket and limestone which is that is calcium carbonate now um, please write down my question in your notebook you have to tell me the common name for soda ash i repeat you have to tell me the common name for soda ash in our discussion now here i have shown you the percentage of raw material to produce lime soda glass we produce variety of glasses now for example just to understand i have shown you the raw materials that are used percentage wise to produce lime soda glass here they use soda ash sodium bicarbonate 25% by weight so if i take 100 gram as a total 100% weight i have to take 25 grams of soda ash sodium bicarbonate i have to take 10 grams of calcium carbonate and i have to weigh 65 grams of silica so i mix them grind them well make powder out of them and do the further process and finally when i get glass and i again measure it i again test it for the weights i'll found that i have 18% of sodium bicarbonate in that i have 7% of calcium carbonate in that and then i have 75% of silica in that now to understand actual industrial production of glass i have shown you here some photographs and steps that we use to produce glass so we as we have seen earlier we use uh, the combination of calcium carbonate we mix waste glass material sand and sodium carbonate into this mixer this is called as a mixer so all the these raw materials raw ingredients of glass are mixed here in the mixer they are mixed well they are uh, made found fine powder out of it and then they are feed to this furnace so this is how the fine powder of the mixture of all these ingredients are feeding to the furnace so red uh, this bright yellow color is the heated uh, uh, mixture of sand and waste glass and sodium carbonate and so on so this is the furnace this furnace is preheated up to 1400 to 1700 degree celsius to melt the raw materials after melting it we get liquid red hot liquid glass now this liquid glass is then dropped into the mold these are the molds to produce bottle at the end of the mold they start pumping compressed air into the mold due to the force of the compressed air glass 
takes the shape of the mold and this is then the finished glass bottle which is then removed now here this is the zoom in picture of the same red hot liquid glass now once the bottle is came out of the mold it is already very hot so to make it uh, stable and to strengthen the glass they go for reheating of these glasses and gradual cooling of the glasses are made in a flat furnace this process is called as annealing finally let's see current market scene for glass industry glass has a huge market all over the world china is the biggest flat glass producer in the world glass market especially glass bottles and jars have millions of rupees of turnover and this market is increasing day by day since people are more aware about health hazards due to use of plastic bottles and containers so likewise you also read about some more industries and let us discuss about it in the discussion period bye bye for now